What you guys got another video. How can you tell if a download is safe or not before you download it? It's very, very difficult to know whether that file is going to be safe or not until you download it. And that is the danger of downloading files on the internet. So the first rule of thumb is only download from sites that you trust. And this is what we're going to be covering in this video. I'm going to show you all of all of the risk that you go into when you're downloading files. So the first thing we're talking about is uh, downloading from trusted sites. You can see here, if I wanted to download VMware Workstation, there's a variety of different places to download VMware Workstation. You've got third party download sites like these, which are packed with adverts on here. And sometimes the executable files are also packed with uh, PUPS, unwanted programs. They sort of pack them in with other sort of downloads. When you download the actual file, you'll get a pup downloaded in there as well, which installs other programs or unwanted programs on your system. That's why it's important to download from the source, which is the creator of that file. In this case, it will be VMware uh, website. You can download it from there. And I see a lot of people getting infected this way. They go ahead and download uh, from these sites. And also they're packed with adverts. Now, also another thing not to do is download illegal software or pirated software you'll normally see that these uh, sites will offer links to software which you can get for free. And these will be full versions after you run the so-called crack or uh, illegal patch, which will patch the software and allow you to get access to the full version of that software. These are normally malware related, Trojans, backdoors, rats, all sorts of different infections, even ransomware could be there and you'll click on it and next thing you know you are infected so whether it be free software that you're trying to get or whether it be trying to activate windows make sure you do it legitimately and legally because would this will always lead to a malware infection sites are all over the internet where you can download illegal software which is going to have malware embedded into it or it's going to have a patch or a crack in there which is going to get you infected uh, so never ever download these types of uh, programs now there's a couple of things these sites are designed for and one of them is to get you infected they're trying to get your system infected so maybe they could uh, maybe put man in the middle attack in your browser and you're going to do some banking and then guess what they're going to end up getting all your information and cause uh, you serious damage by emptying out your bank account so you don't want to be using any of these sites because they have got malicious types of malware embedded in a lot of these programs the other side of these sites are uh, advert related which means they're just going to keep populating loads of adverts as you can see here you probably can't see in the background there's a ton of adverts that are opening up here and this is what these sites are generating it's generating income for these people they use uh, nasty platforms that use a very aggressive ad campaigns that make them quite a bit of money so when you start clicking on them they will start populating loads and loads of adverts and you will end up giving them money. And that's basically what they're there for. You can see here free VPNs and all sorts of other stuff like surveys, take a quick survey and win a free iPad and all these sorts of nonsense that you're going to get from these sites. All you're going to do is get one infected and run the risk of losing uh, money from your account if it's a man in the middle type of attack or keylogger or anything like that. Or the other thing is you're making them money through loads of these pop-up ads that are going to pop up all over the place. And uh, this also generates them income. These are very aggressive ad campaigns. And free, you can see here, surveys that you can take to win uh, phones and stuff like that, which is generating them money. And at the end, you'll get the download file, which is going to infect your PC at the end of the day. So you definitely want to steer clear from sites like these. Next up, you're going to see the next possible thing that you could see when you're using popular software and it comes under the unknown publisher. Uh, and do you want to continue? So, for instance, 7-Zip is a program a lot of people use, but it does come under the unknown publisher category, which means it's going to be a choice thing whether you want to use it or not. It's not uh, got a publisher that is unknown, so they don't know who the publisher is who's created this uh, software and it's going to come down to you whether you want to that allow this to run on your system. Now, some malicious programs can be run like this, and also uh, some good programs can be run like this. Uh, but it just depends whether you're going to want to run those on your PC. It's going to come down to your personal choice and also a bit of common sense. 
whether you want to use it or not. If you don't, then steer clear of them. But you can see here, another thing you can do is scan your downloads. You always want to check your downloaded files that you've downloaded uh, from the internet. You can run them in a sandbox and install them if you wish. Uh, that's another option you've got here. But also, you want to make sure that you scan the file. And you can also upload it to Virus Total to make sure the file is safe. Normally, this will determine whether the file is malicious or not. And you can see that file I downloaded earlier just to show you uh, with all those adverts popping up has come up as a nasty uh, malicious malware file. And that is the reason why you don't want to be running those particular types of files on your PC. Now, you can see here malicious Trojans. It's also uh, got some other names to it but really as soon as you see anything with nasty names on them like that you want to back out and don't click on it or don't install it on your system it's that simple sometimes what's going to happen here is uh, you're going to drop it onto the system and your antivirus program will automatically sometimes detect that this is a malicious file and tr and delete that file for you this is not always the case sometimes it doesn't do that and you get a split second where you can click on the file and then you're infected. So you have to be very, very careful. And uh, sometimes Windows Defender's not the fastest at detecting files. You can see the delay it had on that particular type of file before it actually detected it and uh, said that it was malware. So you've got to be very, very careful there. Next up, you're going to hear the word false positive. Sometimes software that is created comes under the category as uh, the type of program it is, is going to be flagged by, say, for instance, your antivirus program. And these are normally password type programs like Neurosoft that makes loads of programs to find your license keys, also to find a password for your mailbox and your browsers and things like that. And these are generally used for recovery. You can see here when I try to download it, uh, the antivirus program is deleting it and blocking it. And the reason why is because the nature of the program and you may get someone using the terminology false positive. This means that it's a false result and the software is safe to use. Now, don't take my word for it or anyone else's word for it. This comes down to your own common sense and your own discretion, whether you want to run this on your system or not, whether it's false positive or whether it's an unknown publisher. These are all choices that you have to make yourself. You can upload this to virus total you can see here i've allowed this to go through by allowing a, a list for it to go through here so i can get it up onto virus total and you sometimes see things like hack tool or riskware or uh, not a virus and this means that it comes under that category it just comes down to the point whether you want to run this on your system or not now there's a lot of people that use neurosoft software and they use it and they all class it as a, a false positive and we'll continue to use that particular software. So it's entirely up to you whether you use these types of software or not. This comes down to your own uh, risk assessment on that software and whether you want to use it or not. Now, of course, if you do want to run this on your system, you will need to whitelist this software because it will be flagged and it will keep deleting it just like you see here. So you would need to whitelist this to allow this to run on your system if you choose to run this particular type of software on your system. Just bear that in mind. Just do your simple evaluation. Where did the file come from? Is it a trusted site? Uh, you know, is it illegal? Uh, what sort of, sort of software is it? And uh, you use your own risk assessment. Now, when it comes to scripts, these are super risky because sometimes these don't get flagged as malware or viruses. And of course, they can do some serious damage to your operating system. So bear that in mind, and they can have malicious code embedded inside of the script files. Now, I'm not saying that this file is a malicious file. I'm just giving you an example of what scripts can do, and they can be very destructive. So you've got to be very careful. If someone says, run this on your system, it's going to do X, Y, and Z, and then all of a sudden it starts trying to force delete uh, your system 32 folder or something like that and mess up your operating system. Some people have got malicious intent and they just want to cause harm to people's computers as a joke. But again, you have to take that risk assessment yourself and decide whether you want to run these things on your PC or not. Now, looking at these files here, this is a .executable file. 
when you download this file, there were some people that had some concerns about this particular type of file. Now you'll see here that Smart Screen has also blocked the file because it's a .exe file. And this may be cause some concern for some people, but generally this is coming down to a risk assessment. Again, it's an unknown publisher. And also because it's a .exe, it's gonna be flagged as a high risk file. This comes down to publisher unknown. You're gonna to have to determine whether you wanna keep this file or report it or remove it from your system and delete it. It's that simple. It always comes down to your own personal choice. Now, once you've kept it on the system and you click on it, you may see a box like this that says Windows protected your PC. This is the UAC and also the smart screen preventing you from making a mistake and running this file on your PC. Your PC is still at risk if you click run anyway, like here. You can see publisher unknown. It's down to you whether you click run anyway. If you say do not run, your PC is safe and you are not infected, okay? It's not run on the PC as of yet until you hit run anyway. That's why it's important to leave UAC on and also leave smart screen on, which I see a lot of people disabling, which actually keeps you safe. Now, if you click run anyway and it opens up, you're gonna see another box saying user account control, publisher unknown. And now you've got the choice whether you want to say yes and run this on the system or click no. If you click no, you're still gonna be safe, but if you click yes, that is gonna execute, and if it's malicious, it will then infect your PC. But if it's known as, say, for instance, an unknown publisher or a false positive, your PC will be safe and you'll be okay to use that file. So it all comes down to risk assessment on your own behalf, whether you want to run it on the system or not. That's why it's important to have a good antivirus program and a good firewall so you can see what's coming in and out of your computer. You can also use programs like Process Explorer from Microsoft to see what the files are accessing uh, your internet and going in and out of your computer to see whether they're malicious or not. And this is a good way to determine whether you have installed some sort of malicious program on your system. It will be running in the background and you might get detected inside here and then you know how to uh, deal with this program. You can then kill that process and remove it from the system and run scans on your PC. It's really important to keep tabs on what you're actually installing. Malware is only going to get on your system if you go ahead and download from untrusted sites. Also download illegal or pirate software and you don't scan that software. And then you also go ahead and click on it and run it and install it on the system. You can see here we can also check the uh, network activity here. Now normally malware will have aggressive network activity when you're doing absolutely nothing on the PC and that's because it's going out and communicating to whatever it's doing and you'll get loads of network activity in the background and that's normally a quick sign. Now having a firewall is important because this will allow you to block certain things that's trying to access the internet and then you know something suspicious is going on with your PC if you've clicked on a, a file which you shouldn't have clicked on and then you can address that file quickly by removing it from the PC. So when it comes to protecting your computer and your data, the best thing to do is use a good uh, security package with a good firewall. Windows firewall is really not good enough and using a good security suite is also going to protect you from malware and other malicious types of content out there on the internet. Also using a bit of common sense, uh, maybe running programs into a sandbox before you install them on your main PC or a virtual machine, or even maybe uh, running scans and uploading them to VirusTotal before you actually commit to anything. And of course, at the end of the day, you can always use that common sense to uh, evaluate whether you want to install that on your system. Keep regular backups of your data and everything should be fine. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.